And I love Monday nights, and I know you love them too, Bird Gang, because it's another edition of the Casual Sports Show. Earl Burnett, the man in the other box across from me is Sean McConnell. Y'all know it. What's up? What's going on, man? This- man, it's Monday. It feels like the game was a year ago. I was just about to say that, <laughs> man. It's like, man, it feels like we was off a of bye week or something, the full week. But we're coming off a Thursday night game, and this is, of course, our first opportunity to get to talk about the Thursday night game. So for a game, we are going back to the Cardinal game, so I'm pretty sure y'all know that. We got a little bit of Suns tonight. But if you want to stay in touch with the show tonight, of course, you know what to do. Go to our social media front, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube page, all with the same tab, Casual Sports, K-A-Z-U-A-L with the Z at the end of the word, sports. And you got to go to our website at www.ksrnaz.com to download the mobile apps for iOS and for Android. And also check out all the good, wonderful articles going up there and the wonderful work my man Sean does on the website. And y'all know we got the best website pretty much covering all Cardinal stuff. So go check it out. Got to say that. Got to say that. So, man, it does feel like it's been a long, 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 long time. But it's only been what four days? It's been Three like days? four days. I don't know, man. I've been running through ca- uh, coffee and uh, and Halloween <laughs> candy, so I'm just you know just, oh, I'm just shaking. I'm just going crazy right now. Yeah, did anybody throw anything inside the bag that didn't have a wrapper on it? There was some some interesting stuff. Just you know, we never like let the lo- the kids have lollipops because those are the things that like you could manipulate quickly. Right. And not that we're right. like super paranoid. It's just one of those things that you just kind of get a weird feeling about. Everything else yeah. is pretty generic, and they have so much, like, we have to go find a place to donate it. So if you guys know of a place to donate candy, because there's, like, <laughs> four pounds more than we need, we would gladly uh, donate it somewhere. Please, oh, please yeah, shoot she, that she in the comments. For that on uh, 98.7 does that every year. Perfect. Uh, check, check it out. Yeah, they do the, the pound candy something. I'll get it to you when I get a chance to get to it. There we go. I need but, that. Yeah, yeah, but let's go ahead and find out what else is going on and what we're going to be talking about tonight. Of course, it's going to be Thursday night's game against the 49ers. Talking Cardinals, Cardinals, Cardinals. And we're going to talk some Suns because they are still in a, they're in a national spotlight now. Getting a lot of pub out there, this Phoenix Suns team. Starting to fall behind, fall behind a little bit, down seven with uh, 46 seconds left in the half. But there's still oh, another half there. of basketball to play, so that's, that's definitely doable. Exactly. They're still, the whole point is they're in a game. Against an undefeated team. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then we got a good guest in tonight who's going to help us talk some Cardinals tonight, Berg. And y'all know from 12 News, my man Cameron Cox, the man that does it all for the Cardinals. You see him up on 12 News doing his show. You see him up there with Bruce Cooper on there. Sometimes they do a podcast. They do college football. They do everything in Arizona. So you know who Cameron Cox is, I'm pretty sure. So keep your uh, radios tuned and you can get uh, Cameron Cox with us tonight. And then... uh. So, I mean, that fell, of course, throughout the week that went down. Uh, yesterday's games were kind of blah, blah. Did you get that feeling yesterday? Or maybe it was because it was no Cardinal game they, on Sunday. They were very blah, <laughs> blah. And I'm kind of scared to check uh, what, what happened with my uh, my picks for the neutral zone on Thursday because oh, man, all of my – well, we know you gave up a long time ago. But all <laughs> my evening picks, man, they just shattered. I went, I did not uh, do well. I did well in the morning. The rest, right. of, I, And then I sent out that text, and then you know what happened. All exactly. my picks came crashing down. So. Oh. I don't know what's going to happen. Talking. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we had prob- probably two good games yesterday, and that 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 uh, uh, which game? The Vikings and and uh, who did the Vikings play? Yeah. Vikings were yeah. in Arrowhead. Yeah, Arrowhead. The Chiefs game was 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 everything as advertised. We said on the neutral zone show, so it came out to be about that good of a game. So, but uh, other than that, we'll we'll get into a little bit of some Baker Mayfield if we get to that. Uh, El Chapo or whatever. <laughs> Baker mustache. <laughs> Baker mustache. Baker without pill, the mustache, yeah. without the handlebars, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh but we got my man Cameron gonna be joining us about eight fifteen. So uh let's 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 just go ahead and recap that Thursday night game. I mean, uh just real briefly, because so, I know it was a, a long time ago. It feels like it was forever. 
and usually on a Monday night we can just you know go. Yesterday it was boom, 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 but now we yeah. gotta go. Man, that was four days ago. So well, we got a lot to, less to, emotion now because it's, it's yeah, taken like a couple yeah. days away. So the, the first quarter of the game, of course, we do what we always do. We come out hot with a nice drive, put together a smoking drive that I missed coming into the stadium. I sat down like, what happened? How did we get down there? So you were, so you were on time for you is what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> basically, you know it, you know it. Uh, <laughs> I sat down. I was like, did we, did we get a fumble or something? No, no, no. They said, no, we, we drove down. I'm like, okay. You know? Okay. So we get that nice little drive. And then of course, after the drive, we start sleepwalking yeah. and then we can't get that rhythm back. And the 49ers wake up actually. And, and start doing what they did in the second quarter. I mean, uh, in the first quarter when uh, Kittle and Buddha had a nice little match going in their first quarter. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, it was it was it was must see TV because Buddha was ready to play that night. He was getting too much criticism in the papers and criticism all throughout the week, and he said, "Okay, I'm gonna come out and show y'all fools." Yeah. So he came out and pretty much balled out. But he it was a competition because the other guy on the other side. Was, was a hard task for him to keep up with. He had uh, 13 total tackles, 11 of them solo, and two for loss. Wow, yes, yeah, so he, he did a good job. He knocked down a few good balls that could have been deep plays for the 49ers. Yep. So Buddha came to play, so that was cool. But we know how the second quarter ends, of course. 49ers end up with 21 points to the same seven we had. Mm-hmm. And seven of those points, of course, we'll get into that later with Cam when he comes on about Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury and going forward on that second down. I mean, on that, uh, 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 calling the timeout and giving them the other opportunity to, to right. you know, to hit you with that touchdown, and end up twenty-one-seven, which I have to make a point about that real quick. Go for it. Everybody is saying, I mean, when that went down, everybody was cliff this, cliff that. If, 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 if he would have not did that, if he would have not did that, we would be leading. Mm, slow your roll, bird game, because <laughs> guess what? They would have the scored score, anyway. <laughs> the score would have been no, no, no. The score would have still been either twenty-eight to seven, or it still would have been twenty-one to seven. Because you got to remember, Kyler threw them the ball. Mm. Remember that? I was the still trick or treating. Should have been pick six. Yeah, that should have been a pick six. If the dude catch, if you want to go with ifs, the dude catches that ball. That's another seven points added to their total. So take away what Cliff. If they did not get that seven, it still would be twenty-one seven at the half. Yeah, it was the football or, gods eating or twenty-eight it out. seven. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we can't we can we can't play the if game. Coaches make decisions, and sometimes decisions don't work. That's mm-hmm. just how it goes. That's the game. I mean, you can't say every coach is going to make every perfect call on every game because that's not realistic. He he went with a gut call, and it happens in games. That's just how it goes. He made a call that ended up just not working right what i didn't like about it was and we'll get to that later was what i didn't like about it was that you i was wondering what did he see to make him call the timeout that's what i was wondering about because i didn't see anything that the 49ers were doing any different like motion i didn't see a motion guy i didn't see anything different other than that same formation that they come out in that they can run 20 different plays out of yeah i mean i think he was just his goal was to just have them burn whatever play they really liked at that point Okay. And I get that mindset. Okay. I still think, you know, they were still going to do it either way on you because they're they're more yeah. prolific team offensively. But, exactly. you know, okay, he, he tried something there, and it was still early enough of a game. You had a whole other half to play, and anything could happen, and they're a second-half exactly. team. So I get I get the decision. I'm not fond of it either way because, right. you right. know, the shoulda, coulda, woulda game is, is deep yeah, the shoulda, coulda, in all of game our minds. Is a, it's, a, it's a horrible game to play because you got to factor in everything. Absolutely. I mean, because I mean, Kyler threw the dude right the ball right <laughs> to the linebacker, and if he if his hands are not mush mm. or, or or his knuckles were backwards or whatever it was, he catches that ball. That's an easy six points. Right. So we can't forget that. But I mean, hey, the game went the way it went. They still fought a good fight coming back in the third quarter. Uh, what I love about the third quarter is that they got a stop coming mm. out of the halftime. They got the 49ers to kick the ball away. And so we got our first drive going. I mean, the next drive in the third quarter going, that's when Keyshawn gets his first touchdown. And uh, Murray did a nice little sidearm falling. I don't know what that was. It was like a, it was like a karate 
a karate flying sight type throw. <laughs> no, no, that's a shortstop throw in the first. Or I know you don't know baseball. Yeah, but that's that, exactly that what was it the... looked like too. That's know, exactly what it looked like. I know like. you and baseball yeah. don't get along, but that's definitely the yeah. But he, that was a baseball throw. You're right. It sure was, and it had some zing on it too. Sure did. It had he, a little extra he, mustard too. Yeah, he thought he was throwing the first or second base for real. So uh, they get that touchdown, and then, of course, the 49ers score right back because the defense doesn't hold. When we get that momentum going Mm -hmm. and we get that touchdown, they turn right back and give that touchdown back. It's like, come on. That was a seven-play, 75-yard, three-minute drive that just made it look easy. Oh, my goodness. And it was like just clockwork. Yeah. What we do, clockwork. The defense is not ready. The clockwork, like they just can't cover the tight end. Clockwork. It's like, man, what's going on? I thought that was the momentum of the game if we had snatched it back. But, nope, they put up another seven, and they back up 28-14. And then, of course, in the fourth quarter, you know how the fourth quarter went down. We finally get two more stops and a nice good stop on third and six that Byron Murphy made a great tackle yeah. to, uh, to uh, get them off the field. And, of course, you know the big play after that, two plays later, Andy Isabella gets his first touchdown, big time one touchdown. One for one, 88 yards. It was 88 a yards. And he almost stumbled like Christian Kirk did. <laughs> you see that stumble a little bit? Yeah. He said his legs almost gave out, and he had to get, gather himself and get back up on the and get the back on the horse like he was like he was riding a horse and running. Yeah, good body control, just a good route overall. A little bit of a blown coverage, but you know you got to take advantage of it. A little bit of blown coverage, but a perfect throw. Everybody's giving the catch and run all the credit. That throw was awesome. This much above. I the mean, finger. you're talking I mean, a come fingertip, on. yeah, fingernail almost. I was sitting like almost where we usually sit, but a diff- little further back. Mm-hmm. And I could see the ball coming over. I'm like, whoa. And you could just hear it stick, like like a wow. real stick. I was like, whoa. He just dropped it in a bucket. Man. I thought that was pretty awesome. But, yeah, and uh, get a throw a lot of credit. But then Andy still caught the ball with his chest and his hands. Yeah. Which that's that to me was like, okay, he still got to get to get those hands out to catch the rock, but he caught it. So that's all that matters is he caught it. But. And, and Cliff had to say of that, he said, you know, we, we know he has explosive capability. We want him to continue to learn and continue to get better. We have a plan for him and he's on pace for what we want him to be. So it sounds like they're preparing for, you know, a lot of tape to be out on Kyler and they're going to use, use uh, Andy Isabella next year as kind of like that X factor weapon that we don't know much about. Okay. So, yeah, and that and that putting that on tape is going to start getting some defensive coordinators a little something to think about too. So that's pretty yeah. good if he can get at least like one or two of those shots per game. Maybe if you don't connect on it, but at least throw him the shot mm. because that way you get the defense staying honest that he can get up, he can get over top of you. Right. I mean, and fast he can get over top of you. Right. I mean, that kid can move. I was like, look at him go. It's like whoa. But what he they was, haven't shown, scoop. they haven't shown yet, is Annie Isabella to on a slant route with like a little bit of a rub route or a pick play. And then he's gone there too. So, okay. Worry about the over, uh, over the top all you want. And we'll just have to find another way to get him out there. Right. And then they get the two point conversion after that ended up 28, 25. But after that two point conversion, for some reason, Richard Sherman starts screaming at his team. Do you, do do you notice that happens? Oh, absolutely. He gets a little nervous. All the super so-called superstar corners and all the superstar defensive players, when somebody else gets burnt or he gets burnt, you start looking around like, what are y'all doing? Like, dude, you you were in the area. What are you doing? You were there. (laughs) You were there. That's your job. (laughs) What are you screaming for, man? Sit down. Uh, But they end up. Don't you ever talk about me. Yeah, exactly. They end up holding us again because we couldn't get them off the field, and that's how the game ended. But yep. we're going to take our first break here, and we're going to get Cam to get in here and uh, and finish talking this Cardinal talk. We're going to go into the first quarter, and we're going to talk some Buda Baker. We already did a little bit. We're going to talk some Kenyon Drake. Welcome to the to the uh, desert. Woohoo, Man. Yeah, buddy. Stick around, Bird Gang. www.ksrnaz.com is the place you get it from and go ahead and download the and uh, the android app and the ios apps so you can have it right at your beck and call in your hands on your cell phone anytime we'll be right back stick around bird gang cameron cox coming up next
Welcome back into the Casual House Bird Gang. And as promised, like I said, we got the man himself from Fox 12, I mean, from, from 12 News, my man, I call him Cam the man. Cameron Cox, how you doing, bro? Welcome to the show. Hey, we're doing good, man. We're glad to get you in here, man. It's, it's been a while since we had 12 News in the house. Last time I had Coop was like when the draft was going down and he, he kind of calmed down the uh, bird gang about Kyler Murray and the pick. And now it went, it's, it's kind of gone the way he wanted it to go. And so it's cool to get you guys back in here, man. He sure was. He sure was. They sure did, and I'm glad they did too. Uh, by the way, I got my co-host on the other side of the uh, of the glass there, my man Sean McConnell. Can you hear me, Sean? I uh, I cannot hear Cam's audio at the moment, but uh, how's it going, Cam? Like uh, apparently he can hear you, but <laughs> you all right, can't. so cool. It's the other way around this time. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I got a quick question for Cam since I'll just start out first. Uh, what do you think about the uh, the Kenyon Drake show and the Edmund show that'll that'll come back uh, soon soon enough hopefully? Do you think this is going to be what pushes David Johnson away from the Cardinals? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if, if you look at David's uh, running style, like right now, like everybody's talking about how he's lacking something. What do you see and with your eyes? Because with my own, with my eyes, I see a guy that's still having some issues choosing the right hole and kind of hesitating to get through a hole when this offense is is this offense is pretty much. Uh, need a running back that just hits a hole like like Drake and and, and Edmonds does. Right, right. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 
He sure is. Right. Exactly. Yeah, sometimes you get a new guy come in and straightens everything up for you real quick. But <laughs> but exactly, exactly. But let's 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 exactly you'd be out of that training room real fast. But let's switch switch gears real quick. I mean, you're standing out there and you got the cam. Well, Cam's got the cam and you're doing your little your skit and doing all your stuff. You got to get ready for your show and all. And you're looking with your camera focused on Patrick Peterson in that game. Tell me, you had to have seen something that just wasn't right. What 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 did you feel out there as far as interaction with the team and and, and how is he how is he interacting with his teammates? And I didn't see that infectious smile that we always see on his face. What was going on in your opinion in that on that night? Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Right. Correct. Right. You sure did. Right. Right, right. Correct. Right. You better have something to back it up, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I think it has a lot something to do with with uh, his conditioning and those type of things because he looked like he was a step behind, like he, his reaction skills were not there. It's like the ball would go past, he would stop for a second, and it, it's like he was thinking too much. But I I I I, I saw something. Okay. Right, and that's. Correct. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes, that was painful. Right. Exactly. So real quick, just 
play GM for me and fix our defense. What are we missing? What what do you what what do you see? <laughs> what do you see that you can kind of put together and go, okay, if we had this, if I could get that, we should be a good formidable defense at least to hold up and get stops when we need to get stops. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Correct. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I get you. <laughs> right. Right. They sure do. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. You're right. You're right. That's correct. So we're basically going to be in the same predicament each game because there's no way you can just bring in these guys off the street and think that's going to fix your defense for this year. So everything that we're looking for is going to be for next year. <laughs> so, exactly. So how do they, how do you, how do you, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of BA, Man, we got to hold them receivers and Mike Evans next week. And it's like, how, how how do you see us holding up in that game? Or do you see that being an, a shootout to see whoever has the ball last on offense going to win that game? Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Wow. Yes. Exactly. Oh, you know it. Especially, yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. I was talking to Cameron Cox, uh, 12 News. Uh, before I let you get out of here, I got to get your perspective on the two things that happened in that 49ers game. The Cliff Kingsbury timeout and, of course, the challenge at the end of that game. Are you on board with what he did on those two plays or you kind of got a little bit of something to say about that? <laughs> no, okay, don't think nobody would. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Correct. Right. Right. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly, exactly.
Right. Do you think if it, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Somebody had to say something. Right. Yeah, that was definitely inexcusable. <laughs> so go ahead and tell our listeners, man, where they can get your uh, all of your good stuff you put out there for uh, the Bird Gang. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you coming in for us, man. It was a wonderful insight, and thanks again, man. Thanks, Cam. All right. Take care, bro. All right. That's the only one and only Cameron Cox. 12 News Sports. So you got some good insight there, man. Uh, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. He was down. He was not down. He was down with the two calls but not down with the fourth and one, of course, in New Orleans. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty cool. But, uh, man, I feel like crap right now. This damn thing don't work. Man, what the heck is going on? You know, one of these days, we're going to get a fluent interview with both sides of this damn thing working, man. It's just a coin flip. Do I get to hear them or do they get to hear oh. me? <laughs> you gonna start thinking I'm setting this up. You know? You know? Um, I'm trying to look at all my settings like, everything looks in place. What the hell happened? <laughs> There's got to be, we'll figure, we'll figure it out. I don't There's think audio likes Sean McConnell, everybody, so. Uh, uh, what else is new? What else is new? Oh, man, as, as much as you deal with it, it should, be, it should be your friend, man. You know, I was going to say this, but this is what I got to say about this. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Right, hold on. Garbage. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> right, so you garbage. 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 And uh, uh, see how that game's turning out. But uh, stick around, Bird Game. We'll be right back listening to the Casual Sports Show right here on KSRNAZ.com. Stick around. <laughs>
right. Welcome back into the Casual House Bird Gang. All right, man. So uh, Cam gave us some insight on David Johnson, some insight on Patrick Peterson. Uh, so let's talk to us a little bit more in, into depth with this Patrick Peterson thing, man. And I know you've got some stuff. So. <laughs> I got some stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> It's the public's opinion of Patrick right. Peterson, so I don't exactly. know if it's good stuff. Well, exactly. let, let, Hold on, before start. you hit that, let me hit this first. <laughs> we're going to go into the segment we like to call Social Media Takes of the Week, and we're going to let you bust out that stuff. So let's go ahead and hit that. <laughs> you are on is me okay it's up to me all right so patrick peterson's facebook page before the game on thursday night he showed up in his kind of take on the joker outfit oh, he's got man. the p2 card in the, in the jacket he's wearing all purple suits a nice it's suit get ugly. it's a nice <laughs> suit he's got the joker mask and he's holding some dutch bros you know a little paid advertising or something if you will and, uh, you know, fans after the game were not so pleased with the picture. Uh, I, won't, I won't name names of the fans that were commenting, but uh, some were saying, you know, nice coverage. They've got you spinning in circles. You should have stayed in costume. <laughs> oh, uh, some, some say uh, they say clothes make a man. You played the way you dressed last night. Oh. Uh, another one said pick the perfect costume for the game you played. Um, Bird game pulling no punches, man. <laughs> Another one, you know, just being honest, they said uh, you played a good team. They just think you're slow. That's all. <laughs> and uh, wow, another person thought it was the Dutch Bros. They said uh, you crashed hard after the Dutch Bros. wore off, which you uh, know I've I've experienced that myself, so it's very possible. Um, <laughs> nah, that couldn't be. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it, it's pretty rough. There's there's more on there, but I think the those are probably the top ones that I've seen that were wow, coming in hot. Wow, man. <laughs> Man, the Bird Gang show, we're signing off in them seats, too, man. You can hear it all over that stadium. What's going on with this dude? What We should have traded him. We should have. It was stuff going all over the place. But what do you think after seeing that performance? I mean, Cam just said he looks like it got to be something of conditioning. And before you can start spitting out that he's not this shutdown corner and he's not this and that, you got to have something to back that up is what he's saying. But what do you feel about this whole thing? Because I know you're a P2 apologist. <laughs> I'm a bit of a P2 apologist, and I'll probably apologize a little bit here. But um, should he be in some form of shape? Yes. Some form okay. of shape and game shape aren't the same. Exactly. That's obvious. Um, Patrick isn't the shutdown corner that he used to be. That's also obvious. Age has wow. a, age has a thing. Deep now? It's getting that deep, yes. The, ah, the P2 effect okay. is still an effect. There's still a respect factor there. If you're going to challenge him man-to-man -man on a 50-50 ball, he's going to bat it away. I'm still saying he can do that. But if you're going to put him in zone, Vance Joseph, these things are going to happen. He is wow. not a zone defender. He's a man that's, defender. That's a good point, man. He still, has good point. The, he still has the speed to play man, which is crazy. But you need even more speed to play zone because you're already playing yards off of a guy. But when you play zone and a guy comes in your zone, you, essentially you're playing man to man at that point. But that guy's got a head start. Correct. That guy's already Correct. running at full speed and you're just sitting there playing Correct. it. Pat likes getting him at the line or a couple yards back from the line, backpedaling, turning, and going. He's really right. good at that. We've seen it. We've seen the right. draft coverage. Right. We've seen everything. He's good at that. Sitting planted and then having to just from zero to 60, go get a guy. That's not him. It's not. Right. So I, I said it on the JB and Benny Blue podcast on, over this weekend on Saturday. If Vance Joseph is expecting this, Vance Joseph better be expecting to pack and find a new place to go. Because exactly. you have to use the personnel you have. And, zone and using the way he can be used the right, right way. Zone coverage isn't that type of secondary that we have. It is. It yeah. just isn't. Let me ask you this, too. I mean, Patrick Peterson does a lot of talking. Of course, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking about trash on the field. I'm talking about in the media, mm. like it, you know, during the week leading up to that game. I'm the lockdown corner, this and, and I'm the this and that. And it's like you're putting yourself out there, and then in that same interview, 
They asked him, if you see on the article I put up there on Casual Sports, they asked him flat out, do you like playing on Thursday nights? He's like, no. Yeah. He said, no, because our bodies are not there. And he's like, if your mindset is already set that you don't like Thursday night, you're coming in that game already mentally gone. Yeah. So that probably had a lot to do with it as well. If he don't like playing on Thursday night, he's trying to save and preserve his body. So he played half ass out there. It felt like that. And, you know, I don't actually, I, I saw the stat. I didn't pull it up and save it for the show. I, I should have. But uh, Mike Jarecki had the stats of viewership for the Thursday night game. And this was actually one of the highest, if not the highest this year. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Thursday yeah. night game. So you may not want to play in it all you want. But when you get viewership <laughs> like that, Right. Dell's going to keep rolling it out. So exactly. unless you exactly. find a way to hack into the cable companies and black out the TV so they can't see it, <laughs> there's going to be Thursday games. Yes, right. no one likes it. Nobody I don't like I don't it. like there being right. a Thursday game when my kids are trick or treating. I want to I want to do both. I can't right. do both at the same time. Right. Right. It is what it is. That's what the NFL does. They want more money, so they do it on Thursdays. Right. So was any of those social media tweets anything was anything pertaining to the PED thing? I didn't see any on Facebook about that's the PED unusual because that's what I was hearing all throughout the seats. When I was sitting there, I'm like, "Uh oh, these dudes, these fans is not having it." They like, "Oh, no PED." So that's what you really look like playing on the field. Well, it, was, it was just a bunch of hatred. All of a sudden, here's a dude that you loved for so many years, and as soon as he starts to decline, or as soon as he shows some form of decline. Everybody starts hating this dude now. Well, see, here's the thing. It's also Halloween night. There's a lot of oh, already lot weird going vibes on going on. Day. But yet, yeah, fans didn't stoop that low, at least on social media. But there was one very notable with a little blue check mark next to his name uh -oh. that did oh, something. Oh, yeah. That dude, you know, you, you take me off on this one. So, John Gambadoro at Gambo987. You all know him. He's, oh, uh, he's well known throughout the valley. He tweets, um, Pat. He who shall not, he should, who, oh man, I cannot talk. He who shall remain nameless had 12 catches for 180 yards and one touchdown today. He was talking about Mike Evans, Mike correct? Mike Evans, right. You think you can at least show up next week in Tampa? I mean, eight of the last games you had off. It's a lot of time, even for Burnsy. Feel free to go to work next Sunday. Wow. Now that's that, probably that's some of the more of the felt. Heat. I'm telling you, he said it. When, he, when I read that tweet, I was like, that's exactly how I was feeling. Yeah. You want to come to work next week at least? Because we're going to need you next week. Yeah. You took this day off. We get that. It's, okay, it's cool. Tampa's that like dude... only target. You need to stop him. <laughs> oh, man, that was brutal. But he was the Gambo was just being Gambo, and that's the truth, man. Got to you know, give it to him. That was props for that. Yeah, and in all reality. I, I, I heard it got back to him, too. He hasn't responded, which is good. <laughs> well, you know, duly noted, right? I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time to keep the mouth shut and you start you going to careful work. Careful what you say. Careful what you say, now, me too. Granted, this game was closer than you and I both thought it would have been. We both didn't pick the Cardinals on the new. Wait, did you pick the Cardinals on the neutral? No, I did. No, not. you took the safe pick and you picked safe. I took as the well. safe pick. So yeah. you know, we always have to do. We got to shout out to Denny Green on this one. Oh man! Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. <laughs> but they are. Who we thought they were. And we let him off the hook. <laughs> and we let him off the hook. Is that you know what? Real? We can play that every week. We've been doing that every week almost. We've been letting everybody off the hook. Oh, we didn't let we didn't let the Giants off the hook. Well, yeah, okay. We didn't let the but it, 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 throughout the game we let them off the hook. We get them on. We can crush them, and we can put our foot on their throats, and then we let them back <laughs> in the game. So either way, yeah, you're but yeah, that's classic one. Diddy Green right there. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the defense. Because uh, uh, Hassan Reddick's uh, time has been cut, and you had him on. I mean, you had you were on JB and Benny Blue Review show this past week, and he blew up on some Hassan Reddick. He you sure got did. that? It's gonna give me a minute. It uh, that oh, okay. that tab closed out, but I will pull it up as fast as I can. Okay, it might be. Yeah. It might not be yeah, the direct. JB quote, was not pulling it. no punches. Yeah, <laughs> you know a, he don't pull no punches. It's around the 17 minute mark. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So, let's, let's go to some but, defensive stats while we do that. Yeah. So, but the defense is struggling big time, and like Cam said earlier, that we are playing rookies in the safety position. We're playing young guys in a lot of positions. Mm. We need a linebacker that can keep up and run somewhat with a tight end. Sideline to sideline. Sideline to sideline. Daryl Washington, put the weed down and come back Some, to play. Somebody, man. 
and somebody, but it's apparent that Hassan Reddick is not that guy. That kind of gives me another another thought. What were they seeing in Hassan Reddick at draft time? And now, now, granted, granted, in college he was an edge rusher, right? So you know this team is notorious when BA was here of taking guys from one position and trying to turn them into something else. Yeah. You gotta you gotta kind of blame BA and them a little bit about where, where Hassan Reddick's That's head right, is yeah. right now today. Yeah, but, I think they were gonna use him on the edge, or they should have used him on the edge, really. I mean, at the same time, Kime can only draft a guy with a vision. Okay. And it's up to the coaches to use him however they want. And okay. sometimes that happens. I don't think that the GM to coach relationship is always so perfect where it's get me this guy, I got you this guy, I'm gonna use this guy the way that you intended, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes it's, hey, I got you this guy who's really good at this. Yeah, but I really need him to do this. Well, he can't right. do that, but now I already have him. Exactly. So I think I've got this queued up here. Let's see if I got it queued <laughs> okay. up right in the right spot. So this is uh, this is Jeremy Bridges, former Cardinal player, talking about who he thinks needs to step up the most on the Cardinals. I'm sorry. Yeah. DJ Humphreys didn't get his shit together, all right? <laughs> that kid has just been – he's just been horrible the whole time he's been here. Uh, and I understand your point, Sean, about David Johnson, you know what I'm saying, because we know how running backs are. You know what I'm saying? They get to a certain age. David Johnson's been paid. I'm not saying he's not motivated. I'm not saying whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying he's lost anything. But at that point, it would have made sense, you know what I'm saying, to trade. Kind of glad they didn't know because we can keep three running backs with Edmonds and and um, DJ and Kenyon because – uh, Emmons plays a lot of special teams, right? So that's that's why he can hold his roster spot. Uh, but right now, with DJ being out, that one-two punch with Emmons and Emmons and Drake is like it's magic, right? Yeah. Like Sean said, you just continue to put those rounds in that gun, and you ain't gotta compromise your offense because somebody came in the game, right? Exactly, and it's and it's gonna open up more. I mean, listen, I wanted my kitties to get Kenyon Drake because Carryon Johnson's on the IR for the rest of the season. They worked out Jay Ajayi, but it's like he he's a good pickup, and ultimately you're in a position where you have to be able to open up things. So he talked about it a little bit. He didn't uh, he didn't get into it quite too much oh, in that clip. Uh, I might have had it clipped wrong. Are you playing it on your phone right now? That's what I'm looking at. Like, what is that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Garbage. I got my stuff garbage. Too low. Like, I'm hearing voices. I'm like, throw up Sam Darnold over here. Let's like, see it go. So I might have cut it a little <laughs> too short there, but JB was basically saying Hassan Reddick has to go. He right. has not performed at all since we've Man. gotten him. Yeah, he was um, like, he's garbage. He <laughs> is garbage. <laughs> you have to get into that show, uh, guys. It's it's on the it's one of the first articles up there now on the uh, the podcast side. Right. JB and Benny Blue Review. We get into it. I uh, I go on there every other quarter or so with the with the Cardinals games and we we talk about you know real stuff who has to go who's performing who's not JB Absolutely. and Benny man they don't mince words they they say what they mean and they, they mean say it what really they well so. say and they don't care nothing about who cares <laughs> they don't care about who saying what they don't man they just say it how they want to say it right uh there was a, uh, another thing that happened oh, excuse me in this game on the offensive line that was pretty awesome and that's Justin Pugh being put at the right tackle. And that seemed to work because our man, Kenyon Drake, came in and just started hitting holes. Boom, 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 boom. Mm, yeah. That offensive line did a pretty darn good job with that last minute, you know, patchwork that they did. And Pew was on record of saying, you know, how how do you want to how do you think it's gonna be uh how you feel playing right right tackle being moved out of his position. Did you hear what he said about no, that? No, what did he say? He said, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird, he said. Just try going into the bathroom and wiping with the opposite hand. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> yeah. I said, that's pretty, that's I pretty good. I can't picture yeah. it. I can't, yeah. He said, it felt like that. Like, you're just doing something with the opposite hand. I was yeah, like, wow. I mean, I can, I'm concerned about that being a long-term Band-Aid because, obviously, yeah. you're just going to put the faster edge rusher on him now and, right. and hope that he doesn't have that speed, but you know, Justin can hold up. He's he's a pro. He's a veteran. He knows he knows his game. And yeah, you could say it's just like moving around, whatever. But it's tough moving to a new position and new, doing something different. It's not like going from center to power forward necessarily in, in basketball. There's a little bit more to it than that. So, All right. 
So how does a man come off of three days being brought to a new team and put up a performance like that, 160 yards total offense? I, I, I sat down in the stadium. I was like, I like this dude already. I saw two plays, and I was like, I like this dude already. Yeah. And it's not so much about how many yards he was picking up. It was how he was picking up those yards. It was the the intensity of what he ran with. It was the the the, the straight not being uh I mean he's he was really decisive of where he was going and he got the ball and he put his head down and hit people. Mm-hmm. I mean that I saw that. I said if if he can run like that in this offense, the numbers gonna do take care of themselves. That's what David's missing. Yeah. I mean that little that, those little intangibles of, of just putting your head down and running hard and just going. Well the the Drake effect is really simple. When you leave Miami Anything's possible, right? I mean, you have nowhere to go but up from there. Anything so. is possible. <laughs> is possible. Oh, of all the sound cues I should have had ready, that was one of them. Right, right, right. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I love, I mean, as much as everybody has torched Cliff Kingsbury for two, three calls, tops, remember he's the guy calling the dang calls that are running out there on those plays that they're running out with that running back and how he's running and, and how Kyler's throwing the ball and, and, and how we're getting touchdowns in the red zone every once in a while now. What I mean, you, he is doing some good. He is getting better. What do you think but, about this? Um, so he's doing great offensively, right? We're seeing growth. Right. And I, I think the fans can say that they're excited about the offense. Yep. Do you think – that his coaching decisions offensively are only going to go as far as he allows the defense to be controlled by somebody else. Mm, I like that question, man. Yeah, and and that's a good way of looking at that. Yes, I think there are certain times where he has to step in and 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 just get Vance Joseph by the neck. And just say, will you please put people? No, just kidding. Will you please put people in the positions where we no. can, where where they excel, where where, where they're good at? He's gonna I mean, say like, this. Like, we, we were just talking about Hassan Reddick. If he was a pass rusher, edge rusher, would you get slow old T- Terrell Suggs out of the game, please, and put somebody there young that could get some speed around that corner? Earl, he's gonna say, do you understand the words that are coming out of my coming mouth? Out of my mouth, <laughs> man. No one understands the words that are coming out of your mouth, man. <laughs> That's what he's, that's but yeah, I happen. like that question. I think he has to have the full reign, and so that way, I mean, either way, he's going to take the responsibility any any way. But yeah. he has to be. I think he has to go ahead and make that next step. Probably next year, you'll see him take a little bit more because he has a growing. He has some growing pains. Like right now, the offense right now, the way he shakes on that thing, click that that board. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, that's real, man. Watch him. He's doing that little. D- 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 I have yet to see it, man. I just, oh, I got, I'm got, not paying not attention. attention. <laughs> I got to see it. Yeah, I'm too busy watching the game. He walks and, you around know. like this. He just walks around and his fingers are twiddling on the back of that board. <laughs> like, but when you see that, that's going to start becoming a over. He's overthinking things now, and that's how you see all these all these little cute little calls when you got something rolling and he'll throw something. And you're like, what was that? Mm. And then, you know, those calls he did at going forward and all those things are starting to play in his head. He's playing this thing out. He's overthinking things instead of sometimes you just got to go protocol. Mm. Boom, whatever the book says and whatever the NFL says that that's how you should do it. Play it like that and see what happens. Trust what's, trust the team your, or your star players to make the plays you need them to put them to make out there. But, yeah, I think he needs to have full reign in his whole team at some point. But uh, And he's giving it to a guy right now that I don't know if he can trust. Exactly. You know, I'm like, okay, dude, look at the look at what we have on our team and put those people in places where they, they where their strengths are. And he's not playing his players to his strengths because Patrick Peterson should be playing one on one man man coverage on whatever receiver that we have him on. If George Kittle, Kittle lights us up again in two weeks, we might see Vance Joseph man. pack his bags. I, I man, we are gonna see that next week with the Tampa Bay's offense. Let's hope not. You know. They, they're tied in, uh, can can get loose too on us. Uh, hopefully they'll put Patrick on, on, on Mike Evans and slow that dude down because he's just he's playing on his mind right now. And you know we're, we're up against it, but we didn't really get into it. Uh, the Suns trailing one oh, point. Oh, man, we forgot all about our Suns and how they doing. 82 quick. to 81. Philly. All right. 10.58 left? left. Oh, 82 all now. 10.58 in the fourth. Gotta go see the rest of this game, y'all. We'll see y'all next time. Peace, (laughs) Bird Gang. (laughs) We gone.
We go.